We can think of all possible outcomes in an event as being a population. When we know the relative frequency of every event in that population, we can now create a relative frequency table, which we can also call a probability distribution. There are three probability distributions that we will be discussing. Theoretical probability distributions are about what should happen, based on outcomes being equally likely. Experimental probability distributions are what actually happens in the result of an experiment. And subjective probability distributions are based upon experience and instinct. Let's start by examining the theoretical probability distribution. Given the example of rolling two dice, one red and one white, we can come up with the 36 possible combinations of outcomes that can occur, which would give us this probability distribution. For instance, with two die, there is no way to get a score of one. However, there is one way that we could get a score of two in that both dice have a one appearing. There are two ways that we could get to a score of three, which would either be a one and a two or a two and a one. Notice that we are using permutations for this kind of counting. There are three ways to get to the number four, four to get to the number five, and the outcome with the most number of possibilities would be the value of seven. There are six different ways that we could get to a combination of seven on a pair of dice. And then the probabilities start decreasing all the way down to there is only one way to get 12 in that both dice show a six. To the right, we see this probability distribution with the most frequently occurring score in the middle. The score of seven has the highest frequency and descending frequencies on both sides. Now that's the theoretical probability distribution, but that's not how it works in real life. In real life, it'll always be slightly different. That is our experimental probability distribution. What we do is roll a pair of dice 1,000 times, and we keep track of the outcomes that actually occur. We are observing the relative frequencies over time. And what we find is that instead of this beautiful theoretical distribution, we get something that looks more like this. The number seven, although more frequently occurring, only happens 184 times, which is different than what we would expect. Now remember that this experimental probability distribution is what happened this one time. If we were to, oh my gosh, roll a pair of dice a thousand more times, we would get a slightly different experimental probability distribution. But returning to this probability distribution, we see that it looks similar to the theoretical, but not exactly the same. The probabilities will be close, but they will not match precisely. Now let me tell you more about relative frequency. Probabilities are assigned based on experimentation, observation, or historic data. For instance, instead of rolling dice, we could figure out how long you typically wait for an appointment when you go to the vet. And what we notice is that in the morning at eight o'clock when the vet opens, sometimes there are people waiting and sometimes not. The number of people waiting is in the first column. The number of days that many people were waiting is in the second column. On two days, no one was waiting when the vet opened. On five days, one person was waiting. On six days, two people were waiting, and so on through that probability table. What we can then do is divide the number of days that an event occurred by 20 the total number of days that we have observed. And we could calculate the probabilities. The probability of going to the vet and having no one waiting at eight in the morning is 0.10. Only 10% of the time would that occur. 
30% of the time, two people would be waiting at 8 in the morning. That is the most frequently occurring score. This is an example of an experimental probability distribution. The law of large numbers tells us that experimental probabilities converge on theoretical probabilities, but only with a sufficiently large number of trials. Roll the die enough times and eventually you'll get something that looks very close to the theoretical probability distribution. But it will take a long time, a very long time to get there. And that law of large numbers is something that we will visit again with the gambler's fallacy.